Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and uh, we're going to look in on blue, my 55 gallon drum bin. And I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing previously, which is to try and harvest just a little bit um, so that I can make room. You can see that normal size worms will stay on top pretty easily, but cocoons will, will go through the quarter inch screen. And there's another one, and another one, and another one, which is why um, I have start, started, you know, taking a, a page out of AV's book and doing a, um, a little bit of a incubator, which I will show you a little bit later. All right, and here is my little nursery. This is the stuff that I harvested earlier. And you can see there are oops, little little baby worms as well as cocoons and as soon as I dig a little bit deeper in here I've got this one kind of full but I have a a bait container that I am using to extract the larger worms you know, give them something to eat. Haven't been doing this that long. So, I guess it's too early to expect uh, too much progress here. Or any progress. Okay, well how that goes. I've only been doing it for a couple weeks. So I will put that back in there and hope for the best. But that's what I started doing with my castings is keeping them in this container. They look a little dry. Maybe I should add a little bit of water. I'll bring my sprayer down here and do that. But yeah, there's still uh, castings with lots of cocoons in them, so I wanted to try and rescue the worms. People can appreciate that, I imagine. All right, well, on to the video. Yeah, I just decided that uh, instead of throwing out the babies with the bath water or with the castings, literally, I figured that I would uh, hold the castings back for you know a month or two till I really needed them and then that way um, I could have a chance of recouping some of my worm population and even though it looks like this bin has got more than enough worms um, anybody who's been a member of the channel for a long time will remember that right around Christmas time of 2020, I had a rat, an actual rat, get in my basement and was not only uh, taking off with the food for the worms, but it was taking off with the worms. And I've had at least one of my worm family tell me that they're possibly having the same thing happening right now. Um, but they went on vacation and they came back and uh, seems like their worms are missing. And I've been gone on business trips and vacations that total more than a month and came back and the worms were just fine. So um, 
I suspect in her case as well as in mine, there was some sort of critter removing them. Um, so that is, I still am recouping my population from that. So I am starting a bit of a nursery so that they, um, you know, the castings will, you know, have a time to uh, get worked over by the tiny worms and then also the hatchlings have time to get out. All right, so we fed in the middle last time, so let's have a look. Kind of pushing things off to the edge. I see where I added new bedding, so I know I'm in the right place. All right, let's see what we've got. Should be watermelon, or possibly some leftover watermelon. It was a week ago. Um, and probably a good size worm ball. Um, so yeah, the worms definitely are here, but we definitely have some worm food left. So considering that the last couple of feedings have been pretty big, it doesn't look like they've made it all the way through this watermelon yet. Or the bedding. But they're definitely interested. Okay. Oop. So we continue to have nice worm ball crossed. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to shuffle some of this food and put it at the end with the new feeding today. Because I do think that the moisture from this feeding was inter you know, interfering with uh, the evaporation of the castings. I put a fan in the basement to try and help them go a little faster. And in here in the middle, where I did that huge watermelon feeding, um, it has not been drying off as much as I wanted. I'm not sure if you really noticed that when I was doing the sifting, I didn't do near as much as I usually do. So let's go look at the far end where the feeding is the oldest and we shouldn't necessarily see very many uh, food scraps. So let's, let's dig through here. Look at the concentration of worms though. Um, just some long-term food like avocado. That's a piece of bread. I still smell the orange in here. Let's see. And there we go. We've got worms in the mango pocket. But yeah, it's pretty crazy considering that there was that brand new food in the middle of the bin that all of these worms didn't come to. So that kind of goes to the, you know, the thought that just because we don't see the food doesn't mean there isn't food to eat. And, you know, that can contribute to sometimes overfeeding um, if you don't have a very, you know, large bin. Like this one, I mean, this is a lot of worms. You know, you don't, I don't have this kind of concentration in any of my other bins yet. Um, but like we talked a little bit ago, um, we did have a uh, worm apocalypse where a rat was actually with taking withdrawals out of the uh, worm bank. So, um, I don't really see any food over here, so that's good. I've got a couple of clumps of paper and things like that, so we're just going to collect everything up um, and put it um, all together with the new feeding. All right, let me turn you around and take you to the other end of the bin where the second most reading, recent feeding is. So here we are. This was the original watermelon feeding from two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, something like that. So there wasn't a lot left in here then. And here the sticks are starting to break. And if you're not, uh, if you're a new member of my worm family, I have uh, green peppers that I overwinter in the basement, and sometimes they just don't make it. And so I just throw the old uh, pepper plant as well as the soil into the bin 
and uh, that way, you know, um, it can be a true circle of life. It's like the uh, mangoes are, I don't see any worms, but the, the seed itself is gone. Looks like there's some springtails in there. Don't tell Anne, she really hates springtails. Looks like we got a, ki a kiwi down here. No, that's a lime. Lime. Um, ooh, good worm ball. In with the lime. More good worm ball. So, I mean, if you if you look at the trend there, um, the feeding that was about a month ago. So, for everybody who goes on vacation, you're like, oh God, I'm not going to be here every week to mess with my worms. Um, if you're keeping track, the feeding at that end of the bin is probably about a month old, and you see the concentration of worms down there and whatever food or drippings or whatever is left there, they're still perfectly happy with, even though we don't really see it. So, you know, if you put the right kind of food in the bin that will last for a while, then you don't have to worry about the worms going hungry. I mean, I probably have 10 plus pounds of worms in this bin here. And, you know, in the end where there's a month old food is where you see the highest concentration of worms. And then here, you're seeing the nice worm balls, even though this was two weeks ago. This is where we're seeing the nice worm balls of worms that are clustered around um, particular items of food. So also, if you're a new person, I do flip the bins, um, which I call fluffing. But as you can tell, this is getting to be more damp then I would like it. It's not just crumbling apart. So this end definitely needed to have some air put in it. And the worms don't necessarily do the best job of that um, in a system like this. Uh, you know, in your yard, I'm sure they do fine. Um, also, if you're new, I, I'm always doing laundry when I'm doing my worm videos. So if you hear splooshing, it's because it's I'm in the basement and the pipes are running over my head. But I feel the need to multitask, so it is what it is. So moving everything down here, just can't can't pass up some gratuitous worm ball there. They're so cute when they're all cuddled together. But we all know they're not cuddling, don't we? Yes, we do. That is why I have so many worms. All right, so I'm going to continue to fluff up this end of the bin, make sure that everything is had a chance to get some air to it. Um, some people are like, oh, why do you have plastic in your bin? Well, I do take food donations, and uh, sometimes there's, you know, a little plastic here and there. Uh, and that was a little bit of styrofoam, so... I pick it out and throw it in the garbage, the proper garbage, you know. It's not the kind of uh, plastic that the worms will eat. If you see green plastic in the bins, now that is supposed to be compostable plastic. Uh, I, you know, I'll leave that to the big boys who have professional places that are heat composting. It doesn't work really well in the, in the worm bin. All right, now, without getting you seasick, I'm going to flip you around to the oldest end of the bin where they're going to feed today. So we went and looked at this and saw that there were still a lot of worms in here. So now I'm going to... Oops. Can't miss a worm ball. Inside the avocado. And they do take months to really, really work down. They really do. And that's fine. I mean, it's composting is, is not, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, ultra marathon, triathlon, whatever you want to say. I'm not really a sporty person, so composting takes a long time, even if you're using worms. All right, so we've got all of these guys. We can move them to the side, and I can put down some new bedding. This is prepared bedding, but I'm taking the stuff off the top that's a little more dry. The feeding today um, is kind of wet. 
And I do tend to go very heavy on the bedding. Um, uh, there are a mix of red worms, blue worms, and red wigglers in here. Um, if this was an African night crawler bin, I would be doubling the amount of bedding. Um, and that's not just because this is a really big bin, it is because the difference in the breeds of worms is very significant. Um, red wigglers, blue worms, they, I don't know, if you want to think of them as like speed number one for blue worms and red worms for eating carbon, which is the bedding then you would think of European night crawlers as like a speed number two. And then if you think about African night crawlers, they're speed number five. And I'm not exaggerating for, you know, dramatic effect or what have you. Um, they really, I feed the African night crawlers more than double the amount of um, bedding that I feed the other worms. And now that I'm piling up the old food and the new food, I don't think I'm going to feed them this week. I think between their bedding that I fed them the time before and what I'm feeding them now I think is more than enough and even with 10 pounds of worms in here I don't push my luck and I think considering the moisture is going up in here I'm not going to push my luck. So um, one of the interesting things if I can remember I'll bring you guys back in here after about three or four days, you see how this is almost filling it to the top? This will have turned into a dent um, after about three or four days. Um, I've been coming in here and kind of trying to loosen this material so it'll dry more so I can harvest. So I probably ruined the dent so that you guys didn't get to see it this week. But um, when you feed something that's very high moisture, you know, you can very much see it collapse into um, a dent in the bin. So I'm going to put some fresh bedding on top of here because I don't want it to smell. Um, so let me grab that up. Also, um, as I have started keeping multiple kinds of worms, I actually keep multiple bedding uh, bins, um, accessory bins. So this is my general everything kind of bin. Um, because as you can tell my hands are not clean and there's the likelihood that there's little baby worms or possibly cocoons stuck to my dirty hands. Um, so I actually just so that I don't transfer worms that um, are not in another bin I have some European nightcrawler only bins and red wiggler only bins and I don't want them to schmoodle together so this is one of the ways that I keep them apart. All right. Well, you know, put your questions down below if you have any questions about this bin or any bin. I'm more than happy to, to answer questions. I know that uh, new worm farmers do tend to be very anxious, as I was when I was little. I used to... little. <laughs> Not really. Uh, when I was a new worm farmer, I used to pester Emily, the crazy worm lady, and Avi all the time for information. Because um, I was always worried about my worms, always. Um, so I will, you know, I am here to support anybody that... So uh, I will turn you around so you can see what I've done now that I've... Okay, so this end is heaped up pretty big. And then this end I'm kind of flattening out. We looked last time at the level. This was the level... Okay, and try it again. This was the level originally before I started harvesting. And of course me humping everything up is, is also caused a bit of a deficit. So um, next time I will feed down at that far end, um, trying to continue to build up the new material in the bin, you know, the new, new food, new bedding, and get rid of the older stuff here. If you go back and look at the playlist for this bin, um, this bin ended up being a combination of all the other bins when I had the rat problem. Um, they all had to get put into buckets with lids because um, of the worm apocalypse. So um, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. Really super muddy today. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. If you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.